neo-Darwinian paradigm is a synthesis of two overarching hypotheses. The hypothesis of common ancestry and the hypothesis of random mutation and natural selection as the means of evolutionary development. The evidence for these two is anything but compelling. They involve an enormous extrapolation from the evidence of a very limited ranges to conclusions far beyond the evidence. Science is usually defined by a process called the scientific method. Typically, this includes an observation about a natural phenomenon, a hypothesis formulated to explain it, and a test performed via a controlled experiment. Key to the testing process is falsifiability. Positive test result means a hypothesis is plausible, but not proven. But a negative test result proves it false. Karl Popper is generally regarded as one of the greatest philosophers of science of the 20th century. He is famous for having established the criteria for modern scientific inquiry. Every genuine test of a theory is an attempt to falsify it or refute it. It is easy to obtain confirmations or verifications for nearly every theory if we look for confirmations. Confirmations should count only if they are the result of risky predictions. The criterion of the scientific status of a theory is falsifiability or refutability or testability. Put it simply, a theory should be considered scientific if and only if it is falsifiable. Now, in the case of a historical science, such as the theory of evolution or cosmology, it is impossible to create the conditions in the beginning and perform a controlled experiment, yet a falsifiable test is still possible. For example, the Big Bang hypothesis of cosmology made the very risky prediction of cosmic radiation bombarding the Earth. In 1965, this prediction was found to be true. The Big Bang was accepted as plausible, and the then prevailing theory that the universe was eternal was falsified. If microwave radiation did not exist, the Big Bang theory would have been falsified. Thus, the consensus today is that the universe had a beginning in time. Embryologist and geneticist C.H. Waddington says, Theory of evolution is unfalsifiable. If an animal evolves one way, biologists have a perfectly good explanation. But if it evolves another way, they have an equally good explanation. Theory is not a predictive theory as to what must happen. The fundamental problem with evolution as a scientific theory is that it is unfalsifiable because it relies on random, unpredictable mutation. Darwinism is insufficiently precise to have negative implications and so is immunized from experiential falsification. In this sense, it is no different than the God of the Gaps argument. Chemist Henry Schaefer, a five-time Nobel nominee, said, Over the past 150 years, evolutionary theorists have made countless predictions about fossil specimens to be observed in the future. Unfortunately for these seers, many new fossils have been discovered, and the interesting ones almost always seem contrary to the best predictions. Information theorist Mart Ludwig elaborates further. Darwin's hypothesis has the character of unfalsifiable philosophy. It can explain anything and predicts practically nothing. Darwinism requires belief. It has become the scientist's paradigm, and he is rarely able to admit that it is fragile and charged with philosophy. So we see Darwinism is indeed a faith-based initiative. Of course, Darwinists vehemently deny that any sort of faith at all is necessary. Some even attempt to revise the history of science to discredit troublesome terminology. They claim the word Darwinism was coined by creationists to make them look bad. In a New York Magazine article November 2005, Harvard sociobiologist Edward O. Wilson said, It is a rhetorical device to make evolution seem like a kind of faith, like Maoism. Scientists don't call it Darwinism. Darwinism, Darwinism, Darwinism is deeply corrosive to religious faith. Why? Well, I guess Richard Dawkins and Stephen Jay Gould must have missed the memo. The Oxford English Dictionary reports that Darwin's great ally in England, Thomas Henry Huxley, used the term Darwinism in 1864 to describe Charles Darwin's theory. Alfred Russell Wallace, who is credited as Natural Selection's co-discoverer, published a book, Darwinism, an exposition of the theory of natural selection, way back in 1889. Since it is inaccurate to call Darwinism science, 
what is the accurate term? Creation myths from nearly all ancient cultures involve a powerful supernatural god who creates the world and all of nature. The distinction of Darwinism that inspires the devotion of atheists is that everything is based on random natural processes called natural selection. Yet as one reads the literature, whenever a miracle is needed, natural selection is invoked with reverence that Christians reserve for God. For example, in his book The Blind Watchmaker, Richard Dawkins is famous for asserting that natural selection is responsible for the existence of life. Natural selection, the blind, unconscious, automatic process which Darwin discovered and which we now know is the explanation for the existence and apparently purposeful form of all life has no purpose in mind. Obviously, this is not a scientific statement. By definition, natural selection requires existing, reproducing life. And it's this sort of fantastical proclamation that exposes Darwinism as a quasi-religious faith for atheists. This is a metaphysical claim that elevates natural selection to the status of a self-existent causal agent. A myth can be based on truth or fiction, or it may contain an element of truth within a fantastical story. But a defining characteristic of a myth is that it is hard to prove with the technology of the culture. A myth requires faith. The significance of a myth, therefore, is not so much whether it is true or false, but that it defines the worldview and forms part of the foundation of a culture. Modern evolutionary theory definitely meets this important characteristic of a myth as well. According to Ernst Meyer, affectionately referred to as the Darwin of the 20th century, evolution is man's worldview today. Evolution explains origins to a culture that either rejects a supernatural god or believes God is uninvolved in at least some aspects of creation. Evolution serves the sociological purpose of validating the thinking and practices of an atheistic culture that puts its faith in undirected natural processes. Now because Darwinism fails to qualify as science, yet meets the qualifications of mythology, the proper term for Darwinism, evolution by common ancestry, as it is believed by naturalists, is a creation myth. Back to same Darwinist, who denied that the term Darwinism was used by scientists, Edward O. Wilson wrote in his book on human nature that the evolutionary epic is probably the best myth we will ever have. Now in his book Consilence, he wrote, the true evolutionary epic retold as poetry is as intrinsically ennobling as any religious epic. He makes a good point, because in the final analysis, Darwinism really is a religious epic. Darwinism truly began as a creation myth, as evidenced by this poem from his grandfather, Erasmus Darwin, which was published nearly 60 years prior to On the Origin of Species. The Temple of Nature Organic life beneath the shoreless waves Was born and nursed in ocean's pearly caves First forms minute, unseen by spheric glass Move on the mud or pierce the watery mass These, as successive generations bloom New powers acquire and larger limbs assume Whence countless groups of vegetation spring and breathing realms of fen feet and wing. Ernst von Haeckel was the chief apostle of Darwinism in Germany. Here's a clip from a recent lecture by Oxford philosopher of science, Dr. John Lennox. His theory was particularly promoted by the Jena zoologist Ernst Haeckel, who thought that a monistic religion based on evolution could be used to supplant the supernaturalism of Christianity. And here we see the kind of effect that thinking in Germany was having on the secularization process. John Brook comments that one message was put out loud and clear from the leaders of secular movements in Europe. Darwin's theory was the apotheosis of a scientific naturalism that simply could not be squared with a historic Christianity. Haeckel was adamant that there was no middle ground. It was either Darwinian evolution or miracles. And indeed, Haeckel had a vision of Christian churches being taken over, literally, by scientific naturalists, filled with symbols of science, and dedicated to Urania, the Greek goddess of astronomy.
Let's all stop being so damned respectful.